Hey guys, it's Dina. Welcome to FlyNubianQueen.com here live on Facebook. You can join me, Dina Jacobs, every Sunday night at 7 p.m. Pacific time. That's West Coast time. Um, let me do some math. I think it's three hours on the East Coast, so it would be 7, 8, 9, 10 p.m. over there on the East Coast. Set your clocks, people. <laughs> I hope everybody's doing well. Happy Easter. I'm just waiting for some people to come in. I know some people are probably still uh, relaxing with their families or finishing up with their families, but I'm happy for anyone that's here. Hey, hi, Mar Markeisha or Marquesha. I'm really bad with the pronunciations, but hey, baby, how are you? Um, I want to, while I'm waiting for people to come in, we're going to discuss thought culture. Is it a form of femininity? Can it be a form of femininity? Is it feminine? We're gonna talk about it. What do you think, Marquisha? So please subscribe to FlyNubianQueen.com if you haven't already. Um, it's a melanated, it's a network for melanated women just like you. Subscribe to Fly Nubian King TV. That's our growing network for men. Text the words Queens Q E E Q U E E N S. I have tongue tied today to 31996, 31996 to receive text alerts and special offers. Please take a second right now and hit the like, share, and subscribe button. We really appreciate when you do that. Um, also, I want to put you onto something new. If you go to your iTunes app or the iTunes store, um, just type in Fly Nubian Queens and Guess what? We have a podcast there now, so you can take us on the go. We're really excited about that. You can listen to the Queens on iTunes. Um, if you want to learn a bit, little bit more about how to manage your money, which I'm sure we all do, flynubianmoney.com. And if you got a business idea, you should go to flynubianbusiness.com. Um, guys, let's get into this topic. Hey, people. Markeisha, gotcha. Yes, Markeisha. Okay, we got Raro and we back got Bianca. So peace, you guys, and happy Easter. First, what do you think? Is thought culture a form of femininity? What are your thoughts? Let me see that pop up here in the in the comments. And in the meantime, just in case there's somebody who watches this video and they're like, "What is a thought?" We want to get clear on what people think a thought is. So we know that thought, and my friend told me I'm saying it wrong because I'm saying it like, I thought of something yesterday. I have trouble saying thoughty. I know that you're supposed to say it like that. I don't know what it is. It's just for some reason, I can't seem to say it that way. But yes, we're talking about thoughties. Um, and it's an acronym that stands for that hoe over there. And um, basically, more or less, it is a synonym for the word slut. So whenever someone is calling someone or referring to someone as a that or a thotty, they're being referred to as a slut. Now, however you feel about being a slut, referred to as a slut, that is uh, something we can discuss here. Um, or how you feel about women in general being referred to as a slut um, or a thought. It's almost like thought has in a strange way kind of elevated the word because I do think that slut still carries a lot of negative connotations with it but thought women are wearing that more as a badge of honor um, in some ways right um, at least that's what I am picking up when I go and you know kind of just peruse social media um, when I see certain music videos especially rap videos um, city girls um, Cardi B, um, I'm sure there's others out there that whose names escape me right now. Maybe you guys can post a few. But what do you guys think? Let me see. Are you kidding me? There's so much more we can talk about. Patrice, what you want to talk about, honey? There's so much more to talk about. What? Okay, I'll wait for her to post something. This is an important topic to me. Um, now, if you don't feel it's an important topic to you, that's okay. You can have, you're entitled to your feelings. But this is an important topic to me because in today's culture, the way that I dress has been commented upon as elderly, why are you dressing like a grandma? You have a really great shape, a gorgeous body. You need to show it off more. And I've heard this from men and women. I've heard this from women who are my girlfriends, um, homegirls, whatever you want to call them, just 
people that I've been friends with. Um, more so some of my newer friends that I have out here in L.A. Um, L.A. is a place where skin is in. You can show skin at the age of 60 and people will not give you the side eye. It, it is very normal here. But where I'm from, I'm, back, I'm from back in D.C., showing skin over the age of like 30 is kind of a little bit of a no-no. You know, you want to keep it to a minimum. So this is something that I kind of like, I wanted to see. Maybe I'm old and outdated for trying to keep it classy. Maybe, you know, dressing and being more of a thought or feeding more into that culture is the new form of femininity. And so this is something that I want to discuss. What do you guys think? Hey, Raji. Hi, Dion. Hi, Cherie. Somebody said, Cherie said, no way, it's embarrassing. Sad case, why are you taking up for whores? That's what Rufus said. <laughs> Why am I taking up for whores? Now, this is interesting that Rufus says, why am I taking up for whores? Okay. A friend of mine, we and I were having this discussion. Uh, she and I were having this discussion this weekend. And we were kind of, you know, talking about this a little bit because of what, what I was saying about how, as an older woman, you dress more conservative, more classy, and then you get either very little attention because all the attention is going to the, the thought girls the girls who are dressed really promiscuously and scantily clad or you get comments where people are like oh you're so beautiful you have such a nice shape such a nice body why are you all covered up so it's not that i'm taking up for the whores i'm trying to understand is this the new standard of femininity so let's look at that what does it mean what is femininity femininity are qualities, attributes regarded as characteristics of, of a woman, right? Or characteristics of women. That's a very simple definition. So if you're looking at it just on that basic definition, then yes, thought culture is a form of femininity because it's something that is, for the most part, solely attributed to women. And when we think about it, it's mainly attributed to our community. How do we feel about that? How do we feel about that? So Monique Chandel says, no, it just seems as if our young ladies are being shown the wrong things. Edgar says, we should not, but the black woman down, we should, I think he's trying to say, we should not put the black woman down negatively can we discuss something more productive this is the topic rufus i'm sorry if this isn't for you you can join me on another topic i did put it out ahead of time so sorry babe um raro mj jackson speak your mind queen they can come back to the next subject exactly you can be sexy and classy at the same time says raji laugh out loud it's meant to be productive okay i just spoke with my daughter regarding clothing okay monique Expand on that a little bit more. We'll get into that. So Chris Rogers says, classy always win. But does it? Because remember a couple years back when they had that hashtag going around talking about hoes be winning? Kim K got married to Kanye. Um, I look at people like Eve, the rapper Eve. Do you guys remember Eve back in the day? Now, let's take a look at Eve and Cardi B. Cardi B, some can say, you know, could be potentially the spokesperson for thought culture, right? She's loud and she's proud about her thotty ways, right? She loves it. She's twerking. She's half naked. She's in the back of a cab with her pants pulled down, airing out her coochie and, and, and live streaming it on IG. And I mean, there's just seems to be no shame when it comes to thought culture. Um, it's a hypersexual culture and it kind of, in a way, flies in the face of slut shaming, right? But we all know there can be a downside to this. But is there? Because a few years ago, we had that hashtag going around that hoes be winning. And that's when we saw a lot of former strippers. We saw Black China. She didn't get married, but she was with Rob. They had a reality show. There were, these women were being rewarded. These ex-strippers turned models. Even think back as far as to Amber Rose when Kanye first brought Amber Rose onto the scene and kind of legitimized her, so to speak. And she even got married. She got married to um, Wiz Khalifa. And they had a kid. Now, you know, that's 
no longer, uh, their relationship is no longer together. But it, it is definitely way more acceptable nowadays to have had that kind of past life. And even some could argue preferred preferred by some of the successful men in our community. Now, granted, these men may be rappers, they may be athletes, but that's not always the case. We do have women, and let me go back to Eve. If you guys remember Eve, she used to be a part of the Rough Riders clique with, um, what was that one that used to bark all the time? <laughs> all the time, what was his name? DMX, I think. All those guys, and she was the only female in the clique. And she used to rap, she was actually pretty good. And she kind of had a little bit of a feminist leaning, you know, um, pro-feminine, you know, um, kind of lyrics and songs. She had a song about one of her girlfriends who was in a bad relationship that was really popular. And, um, you know, Eve used to be a stripper. She had those paw tattoos that she used to show off or still has on her uh, breasts. And I don't know if you guys remember this little tidbit as well. Eve had a sex tape going around. I don't think it's something that she released because she did seem very appalled by it. And um, you can still search it and find it, it, but it was a very quick clip. And, you know, it, you almost didn't know it was her, but you, you kind of could see that it was her. And um, she kind of seemed very ashamed of it. She had a TV show for a minute and then boom, she disappeared. When she reemerged, she was dating a multimillionaire, and I think he might be a billionaire, but I'm not sure. British guy, and now they're married. So that would kind of say that situation, uh, coupled with all these other, you know, hey, Offset and Cardi B are married. Amber Rose was ma got married and divorced. Kanye married Kim K with the sex tape and the, and the naked pics every other week. They, these are women who are out here, pretend, you know, we could say that they theoretically setting thirst traps because that's one of the criteria for a thought is to be setting thirst traps on IG and other forms of social media. And they were hashtag winning. And what is a whore? Because ho is short for the word whore. Whore is a prostitute. And a prostitute is a woman. Well, not necessarily a woman nowadays, but it's a person who transacts goods for services. Goods is typically money, but sometimes it can be gifts and, and uh, things of that nature. It can be some tangibles. For the service of allowing, typically, a woman allowing a man to have sex with her, right? So there have been people who have argued that marriage is a legalized form of prostitution. And so you see what I'm doing here is like I'm kind of stretching it out and showing you the sliding scale and I want us to get into this discussion as we look at setting some boundaries and setting some codes of conduct in our own community for our young women. We have to talk about these things. It may be uncomfortable. It may seem a little outdated. But if you really go on Instagram right now, it's not. It's not outdated at all. It's not played or anything like that. Or, oh, there's more important things to talk about. Are there? Are there more important things to talk about than the state of things in our community, something that is really associated with our community. Thought culture, I mean, let's be real now, thought culture for the most part is associated with the black American community of women. All right? I mean, yes, we have thoughts in every culture. Yes, we do. And one of the biggest thoughts initially was Kim K. But that has been skirted to the, sky, to the side. And now we have Cardi B, who, when it's convenient, associates herself with black culture in the hip-hop game. We have Nicki Minaj. Question, do you guys consider Nicki Minaj to be a thought? Let me look at some of these questions, these uh, comments. Quick question. Let me see what you guys have to say. Do you guys consider Nicki Minaj to be a thought? Yes or no? This subject is very important because we have generate. This is Monique Chandel. This subject is very important because we have generations of young girls growing up thinking this is the way to be. Thank you for saying that, Chris Rogers. The reason why I say classy wins because I was raised by a queen. The world still look at the former first as a pillar of women. Are you sure about that? 
Now, I have a question for the men, and this goes especially to you, Chris Rogers, because I appreciate what you're saying, and I'm sure your mama is a queen. Um, but I'm sure, you know, I don't know your mama, and I don't want to disrespect her, but maybe your mom had some times when she was dating a few guys before your dad, and back then things were much more conservative. How would you feel about someone saying just because your mom was dating a couple of guys before your dad that she would be considered a thought? I'm sure you wouldn't like that, right? But on the flip side, right, men will say they want a classy woman. Marry a classy woman, but be seeing thoughts on the side. And that goes into that Madonna whore complex. Hmm? So let me look and see what you guys say about Nicki Minaj. Somebody said, Queens don't be wanting to hear it, but I'm here for it. <laughs> Hey, Robert. Okay, I got you. Keyword convenient. Oh, yay. Okay, your keyword for a thought is convenient. So women in the thought culture, according to some, have made themselves more convenient, which aka can be mean to can oh my god, I'm so tongue-tied today. Forgive me, guys. Um, which aka can mean have made themselves more available. And when something is more available, it becomes kind of less valuable and a little passe, wouldn't you say, guys? What do you think? Because let's be honest here. Men love whores. If they didn't love whores, hoes wouldn't be winning. Thoughts? Questions, comments, right? Come on, guys, speak up. Let me see what you guys have to say. Just because you date some, you are a thought. Didn't say that. Just throwing out a few examples of what some people... Basically, when you call someone a thought or refer to yourself as a thought, you are slut-shaming. Now, you may wear it with a badge of honor like Amber Rose, who's doing her slut walk, and say, hey, you can't slut-shame me. You know, you can do that, but at the end of the day, it's kind of like the word bitch. It's kind of like the word nigga. It's kind of like um, dog. Any of those words that people use as a slang, as a, term, as a term of endearment, originally came from a slur being said and people feeling some kind of way about being referred to as that slur and they want to reclaim it. But this is the argument I always have about the word nigga, which is very deep, and I'm just gonna touch on it. The same thing when girls call each other bitch. And you can see that sliding scale, be like, hey, bitch, girl, what's up, bitch? Mm -mm, bitch, I know you did, bitch. Ah, ha, 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 bitch, right? All that, you say that with your close girlfriends, and it's seen as a term of endearment, but actually, is it? Because at the end of the day, bitch is still a female dog, just like the word heifer is a cow. And at the end of the day, personally, I don't wanna be associated with it. I'm a woman, right? Dare I say maybe even a queen, a fly Nubian queen, <laughs> right? So I don't really like, it took me some years to kind of really own up to it and understand what the blowback was to trying to reclaim those very inflammatory words, but that's what we see our women, our younger women, and some of our older women. I mean, this is being encouraged by people's moms and grandmoms. They're going out here feeding into the thought culture. I'm not saying that there's necessarily something wrong with it. What I want to get into is how do we bridge the gap between the two and make it something where it doesn't have to be an extreme. I don't have to be dressed like a grandma with turtleneck closed up to here. And I don't have to be like this either with everything showing, right? Maybe we can find something in between because part of it is women wanting to own up to who they are as sexual beings. And I'm all for that. I do not believe in slut shaming. Okay, I do not believe in wagging fingers at young women or whatever and say, you better stop that twerking. I don't believe in that because I had my fun when I was young 
And we went out and twerking wasn't a thing when I was younger. It was more like, you know, grinding and, and being in the listening to reggae and grinding and whining on a guy, which pretty much is the same thing. Um, and, you know, we did that and we had fun with that. But there wasn't social media. That might be the difference in where we are today. There wasn't social media. So the ramifications of your slut walk or your claiming the thought culture could be much more far reaching. And that's what we want to talk about today. Is thought culture today being seen as a form of femininity? I'm going to say yes. It is a form of femininity. But could it be a form of toxic femininity? Let's take it a little deeper. Let me see your comments. Somebody did say yes, they think that um, Nicki Minaj is a thought. You know, I go back and forth with Nicki because I really do appreciate her as a lyricist and I appreciate her characterizations. But I I have looked at her at certain points and said, damn, she took, she damn, she took that a little far. Like the cover of the Anaconda um, song when she did that with her booty and the thong and all that. I just thought it was a bit much. And I felt like she didn't really need to do that. She was already taking Sir Miss Salat's song. And that's the whole thing. She was owning the thought culture, the stripper culture. And now as far as I know, Nikki has, I don't think Nikki has ever been a stripper. But she was playing into that at certain, at, at certain points. And Rihanna, that song, I don't know if you've ever seen the video for the song Pour It Up. I like that song because there's some aspects of it where I feel like she's really empowered as a woman and she's talking about still got my money, call Jay up and we close the deal. And I'm like, yes, girl, mama, you close them deals. But then on certain other pieces of it, it almost makes Jay-Z out to be her pimp. And that bothers me because I'm like, I don't want to look at Rihanna like she's out here being pimped. But in a way, Rihanna is the answer to Beyonce. Beyonce is the married housewife and Rihanna kind of plays into the fantasy. So we got the Madonna of the Beyonce and Jay-Z coupling. And then we have the side, the version or the representative for the thought or the side piece or the slut in Rihanna because that's what she sings about and that's what she projects. And she talks about still got my money. So there is a form of empowerment within that culture. But when does it become toxic femininity? All right, let me get to some. If you're selling your soul for money, Rufus says, if you're selling your soul for money, you are devour, devaluing yourself. That's a comment. I know strippers that are not thoughts. How is that possible, EJ? You're going to have to expand on that one, king, now. Or, or queen. Is that a king? Uh, that's a king. That's a picture of a guy. EJ, expand on that. Now, you know strippers that are not thoughts. You know some classy strippers? It's possible, I guess. It is possible. They do have high-class high hoes. Some people would say some housewives are that. Some people would say gold diggers are high-priced hoes. What's the difference? Okay? Let me just touch on something real quick. So, according to the dictionary, feminine. What does it mean to be feminine? Qualities or appearance traditionally associated with women, especially delicacy or prettiness. So synonyms for feminine are womanly, ladylike, girlish, female. Girlish. Can you be girlish in a thought? Can you be ladylike in a thought? How do we reclaim our ladylike abilities or our, la or our femininity or our womanliness through thought culture? Because men like thoughts. They like hoes. Let's just be real about it, ladies. They do. So we don't want to sit here and try to fool ourselves and say that, Oh, men don't like, you know, they don't really want that. Yes, they do. Because you can see the evidence by the thirst traps that are set, and they don't call many a man in them. 
Even when I was talking a couple of weeks ago about Cory Booker, he got caught in a, a, a thirst trap um, very easily with that white vegan stripper up in Portland. He was all up in her DMs talking about, oh, the East Coast loves you. And by the East Coast, I mean me <laughs> trying to get at it. Okay, so let's not act like, you know, men out here don't like hoes. They do. But what does that mean when it's mainly projected on our community? All right, let me focus in on you guys. I think I've said enough to get us talking. I want to hear what you guys have to say. So Beyonce and Rihanna both have mental issues. <laughs> this is according to Jordan Cooley. Seriously, I didn't hear you mention yet that Nicki Minaj had sex with literally everybody in front of her in order to rise to where she's at today. Now, I don't know that to be true, Jordan. I, I don't know all the details of how Nicki rose to fame. So that could be true. That may not be true. You know, sometimes rumors are spread about people and it, it's simply rumors. Sometimes it's a little bit of PR because any publicity is good publicity out here in L.A., believe me. Um, I don't know if that is true. Um, Monique Shandell, no, I don't think it will a form of femininity. I believe it's a twisted power game. A twisted power game. I can see how someone can say that because it can be very twisted. When you are straight up with a man about what you want and what you need, and you are on the flip side of that offering him sex in exchange for those things, there is a power dynamic at play there. But there's always power dynamics in every interaction. But typically when it, when it comes to that type, of pow that type of power dynamic, the power shifts into the woman's arena right we have it in the woman's arena already right but it shifts into the woman's area but in a very masculine way because she comes and she lays down a lot boom this is what i want in order to get access to this and so it shifts that focus and that is that's what men want anyway Let's be real about it, ladies. That's what men want anyway. I do think men want love. I do think they want companionship. But they want that in addition to that thing that drives them, the driving force. And that is to copulate, have sex, fuck at the end of the day. Beyonce is not a housewife. <laughs> She's not a housewife, at least as far as we know. We don't know how she acts when she gets home with Jay-Z. But, yeah, for the most part, she's a career woman. The, but the preacher, Bianca, um, Bianca Johnson says, but the preacher is doing the thought. Okay? All right? Yeah, we've definitely seen situations like that. Some black people can't decide what they deem acceptable of a woman. Conservative shaming and thought shaming. Dean Beeman hit it on the head. Dean, kudos to you for figuring that out. Because I see that, and I have even experienced that. Having a conversation with girlfriends, they're talking about some of the things that are being done, uh, showing breasts, sending naked pictures, et cetera, et cetera. Maybe they partake or maybe they don't. I don't know. But when I said that, you know, hey, I'm looking online and I'm seeing, you know, girls, some girls that I know, young girls are, you know, bop bopping and popping and legs open and, and dress all kind of ways and with their mouths and eating candy and doing things. And I'm like, okay, if, you know, I don't, I don't want to shame anybody, but at the same time, I'm like that message for, as a woman, it's a clear message. So I can only imagine what it, what it does to a man and how his response is going to be to it. And I wonder what is the young lady thinking? What's her goal? What's she trying to get? And how this is being projected onto to our young women. Because I noticed in the videos, there's other women around who are like, yes, get it, girl. Oh, my God. <laughs> Look at you. Oh, my God. It's, they're being encouraging about these things. And I remember being called a prude. I've been called a prude now because I don't do certain things. I've had guys ask me to send pictures. And I sent a picture of my face like, hey, it's Dina. And they're like, Okay, yeah, that look good. I mean, send me another one. And I sent him another one. 
it's me. <laughs> and then, I, then they're like, no, 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 let me see your body. And then I send them some, you know, normal looking, you know, picture of me in clothes. And they're like, I mean, you ain't got nothing, you ain't got nothing. Let me see a bikini or something. And I'm like, dude, that's it. That's, that's all you're going to see for now. Like, and they're calling me a prude. And they want to be done with me. And, you know, I'm cool with it. But when it happens to you time and again, you start to see it as a trend. And then it makes you start to wonder. Is it true? I guess they were right a few years ago when they say hoes be winning. And it can make you question yourself and your morals. Because at the end of the day, if you're the only woman holding out... <laughs> Let's get to some real talk. If you're the only woman or you and a couple of other women who are the only ones who are holding out all the way up here and everybody else is and popping and sucking and doing and, you know, and, and showing everything and sending pictures. What are you going to do in a situation like that? That's a lot of pressure. That's a lot of pressure. When it's so easy for men to go out and access those things, how do you maintain your self-esteem and your value? Because there were times that I questioned, am I approved? Am I too conservative? Am I too, I mean, how do I flip this game? And there are ways to flip it. Because I do think that thought culture is a form of femininity. But it can be toxic if it's not played properly. I am all about strategy and planning. I'm all about visioning. And I'm trying to understand what is the vision that we have for our culture as women in the black community that we are projecting out here into the world. What's the vision that we have? Is this the form of femininity that we, as black women, in America, want to be our brand? This is how we're being branded and we're accepting it, just like the word nigga. And we're trying to flip it and make it into something positive. And just like the word nigga, Dare I say, it ain't working, ladies. Dare I say that our attempts to legitimize it and elevate thought culture into something acceptable and winning, if we look at it real closely, we might find that we're actually losing we might find that we're actually losing. Somebody said, yes, you can be both. Peter Crawford. Flynewbenqueens.com says, men love hoes, hashtag facts. You ain't never lie, honey. They love a hoe. Even when they say we want a lady in the street and a freak in the sheets, right? Gotta be both, right? But nowadays, guys are like happy to marry their hoe their favorite hoe at the strip club and, and make her into a housewife, okay? These hoes out here nowadays are getting married. Yeah, Cardi B was all upset and everything. I, I'm leaving all set. I'm, I'm done with him. I'm done with all set. And, and, you know, I can't believe this. And then within a couple of weeks, he done bought her, the, you know, a, ring, a, a bigger ring or whatever, you know, same thing that happened with Kobe Bryant's wife. You know, they bought her a bigger ring, a bigger, bigger car, bigger house a bigger check every month and they're still there and still to this day every other week we got some stuff coming out um on the underground social media with offset with different side chicks different thoughts so he's married a thought and that's not even enough and that's my point you're married to one of the biggest baddest bitches in the game his words right and she is the queen of thought culture and uses Still out here trying to hit some extra shit? That's what I'm saying with the branding. With the branding. It's feeding into this insatiable thirst trap. And the trap is something that 
it's going to be hard for us as women to climb our way out of, especially in our community, because we've already had some historical things where we've been discarded as hypersexual. And to me, it just seems like it keeps coming around in a circle with different names. And that's why we have to be careful about thought culture. Yes, it is a form of femininity. But it might be borderline toxic, if not already toxic, as a brand for women in our community, and especially the girls. So I want us to talk about this. I want us to keep thinking about these things. Because it's important, you know? Nothing wrong with going out here and expressing yourself and living life and having some experiences and owning that. No one, I give no one permission to slut shame. No one has that permission from me. What I'm simply saying is for the women who embrace the thought culture, make sure you think about the vision the long-term implications, not just for you, but for the community and for the culture. And let's figure out a way that we can claim and own our sexuality and feel comfortable to explore ourselves out here in our youth or post-divorce or whatever and be safe with it while still respecting ourselves and while keeping ourselves and the conversations elevated. If a man is referring to you as that hoe over there, I don't care what the circumstances, that's not a compliment. If you are referring, referring to yourself as that hoe over there, or a thought, or a thotty, at the end of the day, that's not a compliment. Just like if I refer to myself as a bitch, I know at the core of it, it's not a compliment. It's a backhanded compliment at best, an insult when we get right down to it. And it shows what you think of yourself. So I've had experiences. I used to go whine and grind on dudes in the reggae club when I was in my 20s. I had uh, boyfriends when I was young and, and wasn't seriously committed to guys. I have a past, but I'm not going to sit up here and call myself a hoe or a thought or a slut or anything like that and be walking around branded and I am loud and proud as a slut. Not that you should be ashamed of your past, but it's all about how you carry yourself and how you package it. And let's not be deceived Let's not be um, brainwashed by someone who is not even technically really a part of our community into believing that this is the way to be. Because if you look at the main three women who put the, the sluts and the hoes and the strippers on the map, none of them were black but somehow they were associated with our community. And we allowed it. We allowed it. And it, by the three that I'm talking about, I'll name them for you. I'll name them for you so we can be on the same page of what this, who I'm discussing. These are my opinions, but I wanna bring it to you so that we can kind of interact. Oh, 7.42, I'm just rambling. Okay, I'm gonna, uh, let me, I gotta do a little promotion. Hold on real quick before I name three. Please subscribe to flynewbeingqueen.com. And thank you so much for joining me, Dana Jacobs, here on Sunday nights at 7 p.m. Pacific time. That's 10 p.m. Eastern every Sunday. We're going to be talking about, it looks like, for a little bit, we're going to be discussing, discussing issues and concerns and questions of femininity in the Black Eidos community here in America. And um, I'm going to try to bring some different perspectives here and just get us thinking about this as women on the Fly Moving Queen Network. Take a moment, like, subscribe, share, um, 
please hit that thumbs up for us. We really appreciate it. Um, subscribe to FlyNubianKingTV.com. It's our growing network for melanated men. Text the word Queens to 31996. That's Q U E E N S to 31996 to receive text alerts and special offers. Please take one second right now. Again, just like, just su subscribe, and share. And then I want you guys to check out um, some of our Fly Nubian Queen gear and apparel at shopfnq.com. Go get you some Black Media Matters mugs and T-shirts. And hopefully they got some stickers on there. I need to go check because I love putting stickers on my computer. If you want to start your own business, please sign up at flynubianqueenbusiness.com. And you want to get your money up flynubianmoney.com and we have this new thing going on on iTunes we really want to get you guys over there so you can just take us with you on the go and download some of the shows as podcasts and that would be Fly Nubian Queens on iTunes so get with that guys um, if you want to follow me on Instagram you can I'm at Dina D-E-E-N-A Jacobs with an S flaunts on IG, or you want to see some of my old comedic rants that I used to do about the entertainment industry. They're still funny today, some of them. Um, you can check them out at Dina Jacobs Rants on YouTube. So, somebody said make prostitution legal. You know what, uh, Bianca Johnson? I think they should. I think they should regulate it. I think it would cut down on some of the STDs that are going on out here. Um, because once they start regulating it, it becomes a law that people have to use condoms, you know, and then you kind of start to cut down on things. And then that would kind of squash some of the thought culture, because if you're going to be selling pussy, then you would have to like register and get regular checkups. And, and there would just be like guidelines and things that would have to happen. I, I think, you know, I'm not against um, legalized prostitution because prostitution is going to happen anyway. Why not regulate it and make it safe for people, especially the women? Let's make it safe for them. You know, again, I am not for slut shaming, but I don't want the whole of our community to be associated with one particular industry. Does that make sense? How do you guys feel? Now, the top three, real quick, while you put your comments in there, I see this is getting lit up, okay? We got uh, 245 comments. Wow, I can't I didn't read them all. So the top three people that I think really introduced us to the Hosby winning game was absolutely number one, Kim Kardashian, all right? There's some things I admire about Kim and her family and their business strategy and how they took some lemons and turned them into lemonade very quickly. Um... There are some things to be learned there, and I feel like you can learn things from almost anything, right? You can look at some of how they use their strategy to take something and turn it into something that was profitable for them. They could have sulked around in shame, and they did. They flipped the game. That's commendable. We have Amber Rose, um, who came on the scene. I don't know what her mixture of ethnicities is, but I know that she is not considered to be a black woman. She was elevated um, by Kanye. She's a very exotic looking woman, very beautiful, very unique, has a very um, shapely body that it's associated, again, just like Kim K, that is associated with the attributes of black African women. And she came on the scene and boom, he had her dressing in a certain way and she was so unique looking and it just, woo, everyone was just blown away. And then um, the third and more recent one is Cardi B. And she claims not to be black. She is a uh, Dominican, if I'm not mistaken. If I'm wrong about that, please forgive me. And again, she has her body enhanced um, I'm not sure if Amber's body is enhanced or natural, but a lot of these women coming from the stripper culture or from um, the porn industry, even though Kim K wasn't an official porn star, she was still considered to be a porn star, already had a nice shape, enhanced it. All of them enhanced themselves to be shapely in the way that we are known for, which, if you think back to the 80s, was something that we were shamed for. We were shamed for having 
thick thighs and big hips and and big round booties. This is way before hashtags was even a thing. The hashtag thick thighs save lives wasn't even a thing back then. Now in our community, our men enjoyed it and praised it and loved it. And it was something that was unique to us that we felt pride in being shapely women, small waist, right? Flat tummy, round booties, big hips, thick thighs. That was me in my younger days, right? And that was rare. It was rare to come across, even in our community, women who had that perfect proportion. We all had nice shapes, but that perfect proportion was not as common. Now we have plastic surgery and everybody's getting it, right? They used to shame us from the white community. Oh, 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 that's too much. I can't handle that's too much. And now look at the flip of it. And again, somehow we bear the quote unquote shame we walk around being associated with thought culture. Even though the main three spokeswomen for it are not even a part of our community and try as they can the hardest to disassociate themselves from it. That's something to be thought of. Like we need to think about that. We need to think about that. Does Kim K go around talking about she's a thought? No, and she's the queen of this movement. Does Amber Rose? Yes, she has tried to claim it, and I don't know if it's really worked. She's tried to like reclaim it. She's tried to make it into something to be proud of, but I, you know, even women who are bona fide sluts ain't really trying to join her movement. I mean, Black China got away from her kind of quick, didn't she? <laughs> They were supposed to be slut walking together and China went off in a different direction. And then we have um, Cardi B, who is maybe part of our community when she feels like it's convenient and making her money. And then not the next day. We need to think about that before we sit here and claim, a, you know, something as a brand that's being branded upon us. And I mean, if you think about even the historical implications of that word, branding, we're branding or being branded, maybe. Is this something that we really wanted? Is Do we want this to be our, as a black community, as black women, is thought culture our particular brand of femininity? Maybe, maybe we can reclaim it like we so successfully did the word nigga. Cause we really successfully reclaimed that word, didn't we? Didn't we? I mean, we're just all proud to be niggas now, right? Right? I don't know. These are questions I'm posing to us in the black, in the fly Nubian queen community. I think we need to talk about these things. We need to think about these things. Is this something that we want to bear the cross of trying to reclaim slut culture? Let the white women do that. Let them do that. Let the feminists do that, honey. In the meantime, we can be over here building our families and our communities and strengthening each other in a different way. Doesn't mean you still can't go out and have a little fun and live a little life. Doesn't mean you can't claim your sexual power as a woman doesn't mean that you can't dress sexy sometimes and, and go out, you know, and do your thing and maybe take some pictures and look nice and look sexy. But what we don't want to do is have it just simply, boom, across the board, branded on us as women. That's just my personal take because that's what I'm feeling when I'm out here in these streets. Why are you dressing like grandma? What do you mean? Just because I don't want my boobs and my booty all out all over the place. I'd never been like that. I never was a girl who was dressing with her boobs and booty all over the place. Now I would wear form fitting clothes. I might even wear something that's a little low cut, but I wasn't going to be, I don't know. I just had it ingrained in me by the older women in my community at a very young age. They gave me some shame around my body, which I did not appreciate. That's the other side of it. You don't want women to be ashamed of having a nice shape but you want to create a balance as much as you can to say, hey, yeah, you can show some things off 
you know, sometimes depending on the situation, choose wisely. Be careful about who's in your environment. But we don't want to be branded coming out the gate and laughed at or ridiculed or called a prude because you don't want to twerk and pop your pussy on Instagram. There was a small moment when I found myself trying, and you can probably go back and scroll through some of my pictures and you'll see a couple pictures here and there that look a little thotty. And those were times where I was questioning, well, maybe I need to do a little bit more. I mean, other women are doing those things. But I caught myself and I pulled myself back and I was like, you know what, that is not you. I felt so uncomfortable doing those things. And I think it's because at the end of the day, I didn't feel good about it. I didn't feel like I was putting my best self forward. Yeah, I have a courageous shape, okay? I have since I was 15, maybe even a little younger. But I, I just didn't, I don't feel comfortable putting that out there unless I'm in a very private setting. Either if I'm with my homegirls and, and we're having fun and, you know, we're dancing and whatever to some music and, and we're somewhere out and nobody's filming it and, you know, we're just being crazy. Or if I'm with my guy and then I can really let loose. That's where I feel most comfortable letting the, the freak, what is it, the freak flag fly, <laughs> as they say. And I think as a community we could potentially take on that stance as well. Like, look, hey, yo, we doing, we're gonna do what we do. We're gonna be free, we gonna, you know, there's some of us that like to be more free than others, but we don't have to wear it as a, as a stamp on the heads of all the women in our community. How does that serve us? That's the question I would ask by us allowing them to brand us that way and us just accepting it wholeheartedly and then trying to like do all this magic and twist it around and black girl magic it up to make it into something to be proud of. We got to look at how this is going to affect us in the future and how it has been put upon us over and over and over again in different forms historically. And then we have to ask ourselves, not is thought culture a form of femininity? Because yes, it is. But is it the brand or the form of femininity that we want to take on here in our community? Is that what we want to do? And we need to get together with our friends, our sisters, our aunts, our cousins, our mothers and grandmothers, and we need to talk about it. And we need to have a code of conduct for the women. And I was listening to Dr. Boyce earlier, I will admit, and he, he was talking uh, to Dr. Anderson about code of conduct for our community. We, as women in our community, need to have a code of conduct. But we need to open up the discussion, and we don't want to shame women who are already out here doing their thing. We want to bring them in to the discussion so that they can have a say, too. Because what we want to do is make sure, now we're not going to get everybody to agree, I know that. But what we want to do is we want to make sure to at least get their perspective and give them the opportunity to be heard and see what we can take from that. Because everybody has a little something to give to the conversation. And then we can lay down some codes of conduct to bring back respect to the women in our community. Because at the end of the day, that's what it's about is owning up and deserving respect. We have to set the tone to get the respect that we want for ourselves. First of all, you gotta respect yourself, our men, and then the larger world outside of the community. Okay? So that's what I wanted to put out there for us. Hey guys, we got, oh, we got three more minutes, okay? I might stretch this video out just a little bit more because I want to get into these con uh, comments. Chris Rogers says, oh my gosh, you guys have put a lot, 298 comments. Thank you so much. I just want to say thank you guys for listening. Thank you guys for being open to this conversation and some of the topics that I'm bringing. Um, thank you, Fly Newbie and Queen, once again for allowing me to be a part of your platform. I really appreciate it. Um, subscribe to flynubianqueen.com, flynubiankingtv.com. Go hit us up on 
iTunes and subscribe to our podcast. Text the word Queens to 31996 so you can get some text alerts and special offers. Um, fly newbie and money to get your money up. Flynubianbusiness.com to get your business going. And also shop FNQ.com. Support us by getting some of our gear. All right, let me check it out. Dina, enjoy the rest of your night. Thank you, Jordan Cooley. Jordan Cooley also said if they regulate prostitution, won't that make significantly more prostitutes? They're going to be prostitutes no matter what. But I would, I would charge you, Jordan, to do some research and look at how things are going in Vegas and look at how some things are going over in Amsterdam. Every woman ain't going to want to be a prostitute. And look, my feelings on it is if, to me, you might as well get something if you're going to be giving it away. Get something for yourself. If you're going to give it away, get something for yourself so that you can be taken care of. Because nine times out of ten, if you're giving it away like that, the men don't typically stick around and care for you. So you got to make sure that you're caring for yourself. And that's very probably controversial to a lot of people, but that is the way that I think. I don't believe in women just giving themselves away just for the sake of sexual freedom. There is too much that goes along with that. We are being entered, okay? Our bodies are being entered. And we are very vulnerable to a lot of different things. So I don't believe that you should just be giving that experience away, okay? I think it's something very precious and it's been hella devalued nowadays. So I don't think that legalizing prostitution is going to hurt things. I think it's going to actually help things because it's going to be regulating and keeping women safe and helping them set their and regulate their value. If one woman wants to charge $10,000 or something, like some of these uh, Asian, I think I saw an Asian girl online who charged a million dollars to break her virginity, more power to her. More power to her if that's how she wants to do things. But that don't mean every little girl got to do that. Every little girl's not even going to want to do that, especially if, depending on the, how, the type of household she comes from and her upbringing. Do you understand what I'm saying? Dominican is black. She can say whatever she wants. <laughs> okay, Shakita. Okay, that, you know, people get into that debate. D DB Coward Preston said no standards. Um, Renee Thomas said don't forget J-Lo. J-Lo about to get married for the third, I think, or fourth time. J-Lo likes to get married. That's what she, she's, she's funny. Kim only popped because she was the daughter of a famous lawyer, says EJ. Kim only popped because she had that booty popping on everything. She was featured in King Magazine. I don't know if you guys remember that a long time ago. That was very controversial because she had a little bit of hips and booty. And this is before I think she was getting the injections and things. I think you could probably go online and find those old pictures. That was very controversial because Black Men's Magazine, I think it was Black Men's, was all about featuring beautiful hips and booty and thighs of Black women and celebrating that. Right? It was a men's magazine, kind of a little bit like Playboy because it wasn't um, obscene and they would have the women there with thongs on and things like that and, you know, provocative poses, but it, nobody's legs were spread wide open or anything like that. It was, it was more sexy. Um, Bianca Johnson, I was shamed for not having enough ass, too much boobs. Bianca, I had girlfriends who went through that. You know, yeah, we as women, we do not need to be shaming each other. Let me, look at me wagging a finger. What am I doing? Ooh, put that down. We should not be shaming each other because I did go through that as well. I got shamed um, by some of the older women just because simply I had a shape. And we don't want to do that. But what we want to do is we want to give women some different options. We don't want women, the young women in our community, to just simply feel pressured, as some of them have, including myself, to take on this thought thing. Like, that's just who we are as women. Black women are just thoughts by the very nature. I don't, I don't believe in that, okay? We got to do better. Oh, Kim made a video and her mama promoted it. Yeah, that's true, um, Venus. Jamal Burns, she never claimed to be a thought. It was a title that was applied to her by everybody. And who would you be speaking about, Jamal? 
They are not black. Okay, let's see. Get a couple more comments. Oh, y'all are putting them in there fast now. It's 135 comments. I'm going to the bottom. It's 802. They are not, they, they're not going to oversaturate the market with prostitutes anytime. So it's too late. Okay, <laughs> if, you, if you're worried about oversaturating the market, if you look on TV. Now, I listen to City Girls because there are some aspects of their songs that I find entertaining as well as I kind of understand where they're coming from. Sometimes I do think they, they do kind of walk the line of borderline prostitution. But, you know, when they're talking about what their worth is and how they want guys that can provide for them and things like that, I, I agree with those aspects of some of the things that they're saying. Some of the stuff is kind of funny in the way that they're saying it. Um, but what I worry about and get a little concerned about is we don't have a balance of perspectives in the hip-hop community with the female rappers, as far as I know of. It seems like everybody's leaning towards, you know, sort of like stripping and prostituting and not talking about, you know, some of the other aspects of, provider getting a provider male or you know long-term relationships or whatever else women want to talk about does everything have to be about popping booty and in the thought culture is that the only thing to rap about is that the only way for a female rapper to get on it's been like that for a minute too that's not even recent i know um back in the 90s like i said with eve with um uh lil kim and and you know, um, Trina and those women, they did a lot of sexual talk in their lyrics in order to get noticed. Our women are sadly still shown as sideshow acts. It seems like it on the main stage, but then all the negative aspects somehow come back and get put on us. Like, you remember when Miley Cyrus was doing all that twerking and, and sticking her tongue out and all that, and all that craziness that she was doing? Um, somehow that she was associated with us and they showed her with rappers and hanging out with black girls. It was the weirdest thing. And now, you know, look at her. She about to get married to the guy that she broke up with to go run around and sleep with all the rappers. And then now he took her back. So, I mean, it's different for them. And that's something that it doesn't stick on them the way that it sticks on us. It's like they'll slap on that slut title or that thought thing that thought crown and wear it for a little bit and then they toss it off and it lands on us and it sticks and then we can't shake it and we we over here trying to work black girl magic to, to flip it and, and dip it and make it into something positive and it's like come on ladies that's a lot how about we repel some of that shit how about we repel some of that stuff and instead of trying to catch it and then make it into something, you know, new. That's a lot of work for us to try to do that. And, and at the end of the day, it ain't working because historically, this is the same thing they've been doing since the days of us, of them sneaking down to the shack and blaming us for their um, projections of hypersexualization. It's pretty much the same thing. So I'm going to get ready to close out here, guys. Um, Jordan Cooley says, as they say, oh, Chris Rogers says, as they say, sex sales, especially in the USA. Yes, it does. Look up, Jamal Byrne says, yes, look up Sarah Bartman. I know a lot about Sarah Bartman. Um, this is a very sad story. They were supposed to be making a movie about her. I think they said Beyonce was going to play her, which I was kind of like, wow, that, I cannot, I mean, Beyonce can't really act that well, so I was a little concerned about her playing that. I could almost, funny enough, I could see Nicki, Nicki Minaj playing her. I could see Nicki Minaj playing Sarah Barton, honestly. Um, but anyway, that's a whole nother story. Um, is that how these black women are going to become queens by selling themselves? Because that is the overall goal here, isn't it? I thought that was the point of this page. The point of the, you thought the point of this page was about selling yourself? I think you are confused, Jordan. That is not what we do here at Fly New Big Queen Network. Uh, we come here and we discuss issues that we find important to our community. We talk about hair, we talk about money, we talk about business, we talk about relationships, and we talk about um, politics and things that are going on in the news. And so I'm coming here tonight to talk to um, the community of women and men about thought culture as a form of femininity that has been branded 
potentially onto us as black women and how we feel about that and what are the consequences of it. So hopefully you guys can continue to have this discussion offline. So I'm about to get out of here. I'm going to just read a couple more comments. Edgar Law is funny. Twerking is an African dance form before slavery. I know. Isn't that crazy? How something that, I mean, of course, a woman shaking and dancing and jiggling. In all cultures, they have women shaking and jiggling and dancing. Even in the Asian culture where they do it kind of stiff-like, but they, you know, they that's their way. They move their body with their arms and stuff. They that's their way of shaking and jiggling and moving and positioning their body, right? And we got the belly dancers and everybody like that. But somehow, when we do it, it's obscene, right? That's why we have to get in control of the message and the images. That's the main point of what I'm saying here is we have to take control of this thing and not just accept any kind of branding that they want to put onto us in our culture as women. We need more, uh, Jamal Burns said, we need more conscious female rappers, but it's not lucrative and it won't sell. And that's the bottom line. It won't sell because you guys are refusing, or I would even include myself in a certain sense, we're refusing to turn off city girls. Maybe I need to turn them off. I haven't bought anything or downloaded anything, but I'm sure the views pays them, you know, when the commercials and stuff comes up. Same thing with Cardi B. If you want more conscious women, if you truly want more conscious women like the India Aries back in the Neo Soul days um, to become rappers, then we need to support them and we need to turn off to the other things. We can't be mad. See, that's what I mean by we're accepting the branding because we're feeding into it. Um, let's see. Bianca, he missed it. Go back to sleep. We have rhythm. <laughs> EJJ, I don't initially look as black women as thoughts, but when they show it, it's there. <sighs> yeah, that's something. Jordan Cooley said, I think you read it wrong, or maybe I said it wrong. The point is of this page is women becoming black queens. Oh, yes, 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 Jordan. Sorry, I apologize. And these men becoming black kings. Now you are the one that keeps saying we need to legalize prostitution. And you also say if women are going to give it away as in sex, then they need to start charging for it. You're, so you're telling black women that they need to start charging their black men for sex. No, you are the one that is confused, honey, not me. Now, if I need to apologize for the way I worded that. Okay, so me and Jordan, this is the last thing I'm going to say, okay? I did not say black women in particular need to be prostitutes. I said that I... This is, I believe this, prostitution, in my opinion, should be legal so that it can be safely, as much as possible, regulated. Women walking down the street, white, black, or whoever, on a dark street corner, picking up random men, why do you think so many women, victims of serial killers, are prostitutes? Because there's nobody checking for them, there's no record of them, there's no, when, when it's legalized, they're a little safe, a lot safer. They're usually off the street. Guy got to come in and show some ID. They're not getting choked and strangled in a back alley. That's one of the reasons why I think it should be legal. Take those women off the street. Give them health care, some benefits. They can take care of themselves, and it's required legally to use condoms. It's going to cut down on the spread of STDs. I'm not saying this particularly for black women. Also, I don't believe in giving yourself away for free. Now, how you want to interpret that, I think you should, if you're going to have sex, I think you should have some standards and some criteria for who you are going to lay down with. So whether that be marriage, boyfriend status, but definitely you should not, I think, you should be considering if you get pregnant or something of that nature, can this man take care of me and our children? And if he's not in that position, maybe you don't give him any. That is my position, and I stand by it. I stand by that. So hopefully you and I are clear. I did misread your statement previously. I apologize for that. I reread it. Yes, 
I'm talking about black women becoming queens, but I'm also keeping it very realistic that not every woman wants to be a housewife, okay? Not every woman wants to be a mother. Not every woman wants to have the nine to five. Some women like dancing. Some women like being, um, you know, prostitutes or sex workers. There is space in our community for all types of women doing all types of things. That's the point. Not to have every black woman being branded as one thing. We can still operate as a community and have different levels of women doing different things. But we don't have to be branded by the outside community as just thoughts and thought culture. So I don't know. Maybe it doesn't make sense, but I'm glad we at least opened up the conversation and you were open enough to have that interaction with me. So thanks a lot, Jordan. And um, thanks, Fly Nubian Queen. Please subscribe, like, and share to flynubianqueen.com. And before we get out of here, text the word queens to 31996. I hope you guys have a wonderful night. Happy Easter. And I hope this got you guys thinking about, um, you know, what's going on in our community and how we're being branded and how the other ways that we can use our femininity besides just thought culture. I love you guys and I hope you have a wonderful night. See ya. <laughs> Join me next Sunday at 7 p.m. Bye. Steve.